this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Um, everything in bloom on the 8th. I've been waiting all day for some light. And it's now getting to the point where the, the light's starting to get less rather than more. So I'll apologise in advance for any blurry bits and I'm sure there's going to be some. The light's really low. We, um, I did say that we might get some snow here. We had some snow this morning. I counted five individual flakes. They were about three minutes apart. Um, <laughs> and they were minute. But some snow fell, you know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really not kidding. Um, I had to go out and get some milk this morning. <laughs> and you could see there were tiny little snowflakes in the air. But... You know, they were so far apart, you'd have to run about to get two of them to hit you, sort of thing. So, we can't count that, can we? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try and film these two Restrepias. I thought I only had one in bloom. Um, and that's the one that's basically permanently in bloom. Has been for about the last three years. This one, however, comes and goes. Um, this one needs a good tidy up because um, it uh, multi-blooms on the end of each leaf and once the um, blooms go they leave behind these tatty little hairy bits. Now if you ever decide to tidy up a Restrepia that does this, go extremely careful because in amongst those tatty little bits will often be a new one. And they can look very similar at that stage, especially if your eyesight is not really, really crisp, if you know what I mean. Um, Anyway, this one needs a bit of a tidy up. It's got a couple of tatty leaves, not, not too many, and um, probably will need a, might need a repot in the not too distant future. Now, I don't know how close I'm going to be able to get handheld, but um, we will go in and see what happens. I'm trying to keep the camera as still as I possibly can, watching the uh, screen. That's not bad for handheld. You can see the patterning. I'll try and move round slightly so you get the shape of the bloom as well, because they are odd. They've got these three antennae, two that which point forwards, sort of straight at you, and one that points upwards. But the patterning on the lip is very, very fine. And the patterning on this one consists of stripes that are actually made up of dots. And some of them get quite large or larger for the size of the bloom. On the outside, near the near the top so that's that one and that's Restrepia Aulisse. Um that came from the Eric Young Foundation where virtually every hybrid they produce has a French um, twang to it uh, that's, uh, the um, Channel Islands are far far closer to the French coast than they are to the English coast but they're affiliated to the UK um, so that's that's how they work but yeah Eric Young tends to use um, French expressions or words for their hybrids that they register themselves. And this one is a species, this is Falconbergii. It's one of the first Restrepias I ever bought from Burnham's as a, as a little plant. I think, you know, you can buy them for sort of like eight quid, or it was in those days, probably ten now. Um, you know, with half a dozen leaves on to grow on, which is how I got this one. And this one grows quite well for me, and it blooms permanently. It's, it's always got a bloom on it. It's ver so rare that there's nothing. I mean, at the moment, it's got one, two, three. And there's another two round the back. It's got five out at the moment. More buds coming. Yeah, so it's just permanently in bloom. Um, works well, this one. And I don't know how close I'm going to be able to get to these because these are tiny. If I put the two together, there, now you can see the difference in the size. The hybrid is, is three times the size, as far as the blooms are concerned. So the Falkenbergii is a very small bloomed Restrepia. And if it's going to wobble around like that, I'll never get close to it. Stay. Now, don't breathe. <laughs> Nobody breathe. Nobody move a muscle. I'll see how close I can get. So I'm going to rest my hand on my other hand. That's not bad for handheld. That's not bad at all. So the patterning on this one again is stripes. Uh, stop saying things starting with P. <laughs> it makes the bloom move. But the colours are gorgeous on this one. Lovely deep burgundy red and a gold yellow as a background colour. So that's the two Restrepias. Oh, 
filming with a bent back is not best of ideas, Roger. Concentrate. Up here, we have the two pieces of yellow twinkle <laughs> that ended up getting mounted separately. Why I didn't put them all on one mount, I really don't know. But this one is a nice little mount, a little tidy one. Um, new growths have already started on this, despite it's actually being in bloom. Um, but the piece, there's two pieces on that mount, the piece that's in bloom hasn't started its new growths yet. The other piece that didn't bloom has got a single new growth up there. So, uh, yeah, I, I've got a pair of those for some reason. I really don't know why I didn't put them both on the same mount. Um, and this one again, the new growths have started. There's one there towards the back, which will be good because the back of this is getting a bit tatty looking. And then there's uh, another one just starting there on the sort of right of the shot, very base of the pseudo bulb. And then, yeah, I think it's just those two. Um, but yeah, the, the blooms on this are, are lasting well. All the other twinkles have gone, well, all except one. There is one that last, seems to last longer than others. But the yellow twinkle has a, a different fragrance to the others. I can't describe fragrances. They've all got a vanilla um, factor to their fragrance. But some of them have got hints of others. Like the cinnamon has definitely got a hint of chocolate in there. Um, not chocolate like Shari Baby, just a hint. But the yellow one, probably as far as the blooms are concerned, I was going to say it's my favourite, but probably the cinnamon one is. And quite honestly, I just like them all. They're nice, tidy, little, compact plants that really punch their weight with the number of blooms you get. I mean, these have only just been um, rescued from rotting the yellow pear. They, they weren't doing very well in a pot at all. So for those to have come back and managed to push up a bloom spike each, I'm, I'm well pleased with that. So that's that. And then, um, sorry if you get seasick, but I won't get on with this. <laughs> the tiny twinkle up the back here is um, still doing well. Blooms are still looking good. Um, that's going to be my entry. Well, it's going to get two entry. I can't entry in for, for Bournemouth Orchid Society. It went in last month and <laughs> it was point 0.1 of a point behind coming third. <laughs> Because what we have to do with the Bournemouth Orchid Society, with the virtual competition, there's four judges. And I have to add up the points and divide by four to get an average score. And it often comes to a decimal place. So um, that's how it has to be. And the, um, the one that came third was just a tiny little bit higher than mine. And that was, a, uh, that was annoying, that was, because uh, it... It was beaten by a plant that came in almost too late to be counted. <laughs> I'd already gone to bed thinking I'd finished for the month. And when I got up the next morning, another plant had come in about sort of 11 o'clock that evening. So an hour before the cutoff and it, uh, it just pipped mine at the post. Never mind, it's the taking part that's important. So that can now go into the virtual orchid show for the other orchid society. So... Uh, the only thing I've got to do is there's a couple of leaves need nipping. Things like this need to come off. Yeah. But we'll get on with that when we get round to it. Oh, holding camera at shoulders height is not a good idea. Oh. Do you know this getting old is getting on my flipping thrupneys lately. I seem to be getting caught out with little, just little things, little niggles. Well, that's one of them, is holding this camera at arm's length. Now, this catlia up here has got three spikes on. The best one's up there by the window, which I can't get at, get at but we'll look at these. The blooms are the same on all the spikes. Um, very pretty Cattleya. This is um, Young Min Orange. Um, had it quite a long time. It had the rhizome cut to gain an extra lead, which it promptly did. So we've got three growths. All happened to bloom at the same time. We're looking at the weakest of them. Um, by quite a bit actually. I think there's only three blooms on that uh, particular spike. That's the best spike up there by far. So that's that one. Um, we've still got this Tolumnia. This thing's still hanging in there. This must have been in bloom for a very very long time now. 
and the trouble is I've moved it and unless I can get it to stay still I'm never going to get that in focus. It's on a mount which means it swings. Let's put, stop it swinging. Right, now I might be able to get quite close now. It's a very pretty little bloom this one. Lovely deep burgundy, some paler patches and a nice bit of yellow. A very attractive little bloom and it's on its last legs, it's, it's done branching and um, that will be its last bloom and then it can go back up with the others. New growth already started so uh, very small weak plant this one and that is Jarak Firm Hickory it says on the tag which is very unusual to even have a tag now this, um, this one over here has done well for itself, um, very well for itself. Um, blooms, it's bloomed with four spikes, which is good stuff. Um, best spike was the first one to come out. So the plant's heading off in two directions. In this direction it had four, uh, three new growths, all of which have bloomed. And in the other direction it only had one, but it's the best spike. So. Um, it's produced the most number of flowers on that particular spike. The other three spikes came along behind. Um, nonetheless, three lots of blooms. And this is a Leto Lelonia, uh, come on brain, you can do this, Joyce Hilton. <laughs> I'll be doing pop-ups, I don't know why I struggle. <laughs> Um, but this one, um, the camera will not do this one justice because cameras don't seem to work so good with the... When you deviate from pink and have, head towards the sort of lavender type colours, um, it just never seems to record them as well as it could do. I'm going to see if I can get this to focus a bit better. If I touch on a bloom, force it, it might actually lock on a bit better. Um, but nonetheless, they are attractive, virtually no fragrance, um, and quite long spikes um, for the size of the blooms. But uh, yeah, I like that one a lot. Now we're going to have fun now. Can I get that down? Oh, I'm going to have to get it down, aren't I? This is everything in bloom, that's the whole point of it. Um, all right, we're going to have to try and get this thing down. Urgh! Gotcha. So there's a strappy Cattleya right next to this one. Now this one's got a problem, but it doesn't matter. This came from Jeff's, and the growth that has produced the blooms has lost its leaf. Now I don't know whether that's because it got knocked, but also the spike is going black at the base. So uh, this growth's not happy, and it's the one with the spike. So I think some uh, fungus or something has got in there at some point. Um, the blooms have been out a while now, they are starting to go. See, there's even some black on the blooms. There's something not right with this growth. It needs to come off, quite honestly. <laughs> Unfortunately, looking at the plant, it's the one with the new roots. Uh, I think we might just take the top of the, take the, top of the growth off. That'll include the, the leaf and the spike. Yeah, there's several, several, this is coming into growth now. There's sort of roots and new growth just starting to peep through. So it means it's going to make it anyway. But um, attractive little blooms, um, typical of the um, Brassavola style hybrids, um, but obviously crossed with something to get some colour into them. So they tend to be a bit um, creamy, greeny, whitish <laughs> in amongst there somewhere. Whereas to get some nice bright gold and orange like that, um, obviously it's a hybrid. So that's that one, and then uh, oh, I'll put that back in a minute, or tomorrow. <laughs> it's hardly worth putting it back in the bright light for today, seeing as it's fading fast. The um, Phalaenopsis type, Thai Angel, has had it. You can see this, this one's gone. All the other blooms have fallen except this last one. So it, it sneaks into the video for the last time for, well, until it pushes up a new growth again basically. Very attractive because of the tessellations, um, which as the blooms age become more apparent. Very attractive bloom. Good colour, good size for Phalaenopsis type um, dendrobium bloom. So.
pleased with that. That that bloom has been on there since October last year. That's when it's first opened. It's February now. It's not bad going, is it? Um, I'd say compatible with some of the Phalaenopsis for longevity, but um, right, I have to, I'm going to have to bend down now. <laughs> the um, Cymbidium down here is on its way out, but this got munched. Um, something got at this. Now I found two slugs and some sort of caterpillar type thing tucked in under the pot um, and I think that's what did the damage. Um, so damaged blooms um, but nonetheless just about hanging in there. These are the latest ones to open at the top here. Just hanging in there long enough for me to film it once more and then it will be gone for the year. New growth, I think, yeah, new growth is already starting, coming up there. Looks like there's only going to be one again. So, um, yeah, and it certainly can't go outside yet, that's for sure. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite attractive. I mean, it's, I'm obliged to keep it. It was, um, it was owned by a friend of Hannah's who died, and um, his orchids were handed out at the funeral, basically. And Hannah wanted one as a memory and then realised she couldn't actually keep it herself. And Dad, oh, all right. <laughs> I'm not that keen on Symbidiums, but um, as something that I've inherited and, and um, am obliged to keep, the colours are quite attractive. I mean, they're fading quite, quite badly now. So uh, that'll be the last time we look at that before the blooms come off. And then over here, the... Um, Oh dear, Tahitian Dancer can only just be counted as still in bloom. If it was that spike, it would have gone. This is the last spike with anything worth noting, and I think that's probably the only bloom that's still intact without a, without a brown bit on it. So that's, that's on its last legs now. Fragrance on this has been absolutely stunning. I've been well pleased with it. Four spikes, one on each new growth, and um, it's done well. Now, as I say, well pleased with that one. And next to it, just about hanging on, is the Dendrobium Alexandre. Again, blooms are just starting to fade. It's already lost um, the other spike, that's already gone. Um, and this spike with two blooms is just hanging in there. It won't be much longer. And I'm hoping as soon as those blooms are off, it's going to trigger some growth at the, at the base of the plant. Because the plant's not in a very good state. It's got this cane down here with two leaves. And this cane, which has lost its one leaf and is left with one. So the whole plant's only got three leaves left. So, it's, it's, you know, it hasn't got much help coming in from the top. So uh, it could do with a new growth. Uh, it needs a repot, I think. But I'm hoping to get a new growth and some roots before I get around to doing that. Yeah, alien shape, and um, I'll show you because you might think I've forgotten it completely. The buds on the um, Spectaboli are now starting to show their colour, but they're not open yet. Just in case anybody says, you forgot the Spectaboli, because I didn't. So that's everything. That's absolutely everything. Oh no! We've still got this one up here that gets forgotten a lot because it's right up above my head and now I'm holding the camera at arm's length again. This is Dendrobium conico. Now this is a Victoria Regina cross. Um, it's crossed with Gold Schmittianum, I think the other one is. And this is a perpetual bloomer virtually. Um, and it normally produces nice clusters of blooms. Let's get, oh, that's a stupid cockerel again. I wouldn't mind so much if it had learnt to make the proper noise but uh, but this one is not blooming well at the moment. It's having the odd bud, not a cluster. But um, <laughs> there's another one. Oh no, that one's got two. And then we've got another one here and th this one's sort of starting to fade now. But it's in bloom most of the time throughout the year. And it's an attractive colour. And I think the camera's actually catching the colour of that reasonably correct. Um, and then, um, well, that's it then. Is everybody going, no, it's not, come on, show us the Novali. All right. <laughs> now, you're not going to like this. I'm going to do it now. 
you'll have to put up with the camera being seasick for a little bit while I, ouch, clamber over the heaters. <coughs> Instead of moving out the way, yeah, that's very sensible, isn't it? And what we're going to do is we're going to cut these leaves off. That one. And that one. Now, bearing in mind this would lose those leaves very soon anyway, because it's an old cane. By taking them off, we can now see the blooms better. Yay! Now, what I was saying about this one is the colours are absolutely fabulous. Look at the size of the blooms. You know, for a nobly, that is quite large blooms. And very flat, very flat blooms. You look at the lip. The lip actually spreads out over the base of the petals. Quite an unusual shape, that. But, uh, yeah, that is... Uh, <laughs> the weight is bending the cane over. The actual weight of those blooms on that cane. They're quite tightly clustered. And there is some fragrance, not a lot, but um, intense purple, surrounded by a pale yellow, See now for perfection, the curly edges to the petals, perfect, and then you've got a deep colour fading to pale towards the centre on the petals, great. Sepals reflect the colour of the pebbles, petals, really good. Lip, nice and flat, so it's open and we can see all the colours inside, really good. Purple round the edge of the lip, reflecting the petals and sepals, white edge to the lip, fading and into yellow and then into the deepest purple in the centre. The only thing wrong with that, the yellow's too pale <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'd have preferred a brighter yellow to go with the purple. Um, there's some colours don't go so good. Uh, yellow and pink doesn't seem to go very well, but yellow and purple does. Um, I, think, I think the camera's showing the colour on that accurately. It's not bad at all. But yeah, the, the, the blooms take a while to open fully. And so they open like this in that sort of cup shape, which a lot of nobly hybrids, they stay like that. But this one really likes to open flat. But it takes three or four days to get like that. Now uh, that's why I haven't filmed it up till now, because I wanted at least one of the blooms fully open. Uh, that's literally only happened today. So, uh, yeah, I might actually, I might actually, see this one's tied to stop it falling over. But in fact, the tie has slipped a bit. If I bring that uh, leaf underneath the tie, preferably without breaking it. Oh, come on. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Jolly good now. Yeah, it's holding it a bit more upright now. So, very attractive. Keeping the best till last, as I often do. And um, I don't know how long they will last, but um, I can't remember. Oh, and do you know what? Out of the corner of my eye, I said that was it, wasn't I? I've just spotted something else that I didn't realise had opened until now. Literally. Corner of the eye, Jobby. And it's up here. And it's just opened, just literally opened, overnight. And that is an old favourite, it's been around a while now. And it's little lemon drops crossed with um, Encyclia vitellina. And it comes and goes, and the whole plant nearly went, nearly lost this. Those stumpy bits at the base are where a new growth had to be cut off, and the previous growth that had just finished blooming had to be cut off because some serious rot set in and the new growth, uh, the mature growth that had to be cut off with the rot also had the start of the new root system on it which was then lost. So the fact that this has even made it and managed to bloom, I'm surprised. I thought I'd lost the plant. You can see the um, residual of the rot on those, the base of that cane but it's gone dry now, it's dry and hard, and it's not spreading. Because if I take those two bulbs off as well, that leaves nothing. That would leave one leaf and the latest growth. That's not enough plant. It needs some backup here. 
So at some point, it'll either produce another new growth and get some roots, or it may just start some root growth as, <clears throat> as the better weather comes. But um, very attractive little cattleya, this one. As I say, it um, comes and goes. And we've had this one in flower many times. I'm just, just trying to find somewhere where I can put it down and get in a bit closer. The bloom's not fully open yet because it's not flat. Yeah, and the lip's not fully open either. Now, get a look at the colour. I would suggest that anybody asked what colour that was, they would say yellow. Yeah, we'll come back in a week and it'll be heading towards that colour. It's a dramatic colour changer. Opens yellow and turns orange. And we've got another bud, so we've got two on there. So, uh, as I say, I thought I'd lost that. I really did. I thought it was a goner. You know, rot sets in as bad as that. It sometimes just don't come back. So we were lucky with that one. So, there, that really is it now. <laughs> there are no other buds around that can even have... Start, well, there, there's a cattleya starting to open, but I can see that one clearly, and it's not open. Uh, not yet. Probably will be in about two days. And we'll have the Dendrobium spectabili to come in the reason. So the thing is, although I know the spectabili blooms are large, these are the first blooms for me, so I don't know quite how large those buds have got to get before they split, if you see what I mean. I mean, they look, as far as blooms go, they're similar, similar to the Alexandrae, but um, bigger, definitely. <laughs> right, so I'll leave you with that then. Um, as I say, it's the, the spectacle of this is really the, just the sheer size, you know, I mean, it's uh, at a distance you'd think those were cattleya blooms, but um, very attractive, and um, yeah, so those two canes are in season now, I would say, and um, <clears throat> whether the other two canes are going to bloom, I don't know, because this was bought midsummer in bloom, which is just wrong. It's the wrong time of year um, and the two canes that have got these blooms on carried on growing through last winter yeah and, and then did nothing throughout the season and they've started to bloom now um, so those two two canes are now okay um, but the two canes that I've grown are these two at the back um, which have got no sign of bud yet they still may bloom, they may bloom a bit later, you know, late spring. Um, they might wait till the summer and they might, they might do what these two have done and wait till the other end of next winter, but we shall see. But I think after this coming growing season, this will be back in season and it'll settle down to blooming, you know, late winter, early spring, which is its uh, proper time basically. But uh, yeah, quite pleased with that. I just hope they last well. Um, and then if they do, it earns its keep because it takes up a lot of space. It's a tall plant. So, uh, good stuff. And I will see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. And I thought I'd tag these on the end. Um, these buds were just starting to open this morning when I snipped them in the garden and brought them in. So during the day they've opened up nicely. And it's just a, a splash of spring in the house. It's just nice. Um, as I say, this is a very early blooming variety of daffodil. can't remember the name, but um, they come up reliably every year. And normally as they all open and they look absolutely fabulous, we get a storm and the rain and the wind beat them down to the ground. At which point I try and rescue as many as possible, bring them in and put them in a, <laughs> put them in a glass with some water. But uh, yeah, nice touch of spring and didn't quite make it to everything open <laughs> on the 8th, but uh, we'll have a look at it soon. It is opening, but not open. So there we go. Spring is not that far away. See you next time.